Hey guys, it's Obi here. Um, just wanted to give everybody a heads up and let you guys know that we are done with um, drive shafts and drive lines. <clears throat> I decided I wasn't going to give you guys a test. It, just with everything going on, I don't feel like it would be a very good way of going about things. And you guys have been doing a pretty good job of getting these assignments done. And I really appreciate that. In fact, you guys have about a 90% completion rate, and that is way better than pretty much the entire rest of the school. So I really appreciate that. Let's let's try to keep it up. Um, so having said that, we are going to continue on to automatic air conditioning. I know you guys were under the impression that we were going to switch to automatic transmissions after this, and that makes sense. That would have been the logical way to go. However, I, I would rather reserve that for a chance if we have if we do go back or when we do go back I, I haven't heard anything either way but I, I would rather reserve that for then so if we get a chance to go back then I would like to leave that because it's pretty much hands-on and I think you guys are really enjoy it so automatic air conditioning systems is, is where we're gonna head anyways um, with with air conditioning systems we are going to start talking about the air distribution system that's where we're gonna focus first so our air distribution system is this right here. So if we look at this, there's kind of a lot going on. Uh, we're not really probably understanding everything right away. We see some little blue bits and what looks like a blower motor and a bunch of different doors. And some of you might understand this and some of you might just be going, what the heck? I am lost and I have no clue what's going on. So the easiest thing and the best way for us to understand this is to break it down into its different components. So an HVAC air distribution system has three basic components, okay? So we are going to have the airflow control section. So basically everything before here, before the evaporator, <coughs> is going to be the airflow control. And this is going to control the, the volume or speed of air and where the air is coming from, okay? And then we will have the temperature control section, and this one is controlling the temperature of the outlet panel air. So after we bring the air in and condition it, what the temperature is after it comes out is, is everything we're going to be doing here, okay? And then the third section, the outlet control. So the outlet control section is where we're going to control whether it goes to the defrost or to the floor or the, the vent position or some combination thereof, okay? Um, <clears throat> but that, that's basically it. There's, it's not too terribly complicated. Now, we're going to break each individual system down. Today, we're going to talk about the airflow control portion. So in the airflow control system or the air inlet section, it is responsible for supplying clean air for the entire system and it's going to include the following components. So we have a cabin air filter. Not all vehicles, but most, will have a cabin filter, and its job is to filter dust and pollen from the fresh outside air. The air inlet door, <coughs> which is going to be used to, to dictate whether we are pulling air from inside the vehicle or outside the vehicle. So allows air to be pulled from outside or recirculates air from inside the vehicle. Then the blower motor, which is actually going to be pressurizing the air for distribution. And the blower motor resistor switch, resistor and switch, which is going to control the voltage supplied to the blower motor, therefore controlling the speed of the blower motor. Okay. So I want to um, show you the air inlet door first. This is actually an HVAC plenum or distribution box. So this is what we're going to see behind the dash. Phoenix and Ethan, I'm sure you guys remember one of these. Um, this can be pretty complicated to get to. A lot of this is hidden behind quite a bit of stuff. So uh, I, you just won't typically see this. I want you guys to see here, our recirculation door is right here. And if you guys look really close, you'll see kind of a gray foam with a slightly different color gray right here. And that is actually our recirculation door. So this thing can be either up in this position, and this is actually recirculation. So in this situation, the air is going to be coming through this little grate, and that is actually conditioned air from inside the vehicle. Okay. Now, if that door comes down, it'll go about like this, and it'll it'll seal right up against that plastic. Now, if that's the case, 
we're actually going to, I'm sorry, it'll go across like this and seal up against the plastic. That'll then allow fresh air to come from outside, okay? And our, <clears throat> typically on most vehicles, we would have our cabin air filter right there or somewhere in that ducting. <clears throat> so our recirculation door actuator is actually going to be part of the air um, airflow control system, okay? Um, and on this vehicle, our airflow control system, gosh darn it, there, our airflow control system is going to basically stop right here. So on this side, you guys can't see it, but our blower motor resistor is here, our blower motor is right here, and our recirculation door is here. So everything from here over is our, our air inlet control section, okay? Now, I want to talk about blower motors just a little bit. I imagine a lot of you have probably seen a blower motor by this point, but if you have it, this is a blower motor. So this is what's known as a scroll cage blower motor, and you can identify it because it has a circular fan blade. So we see the pitch on these blades. This thing is actually spinning in this direction, so it's going to be counterclockwise. No, it's going to be clockwise, I'm sorry. And what will actually happen is the air is going to come in around the outside and then be pushed through the inside, okay? That's the way this entire system is going to work. Um, now, this blower motor is actually, if you guys remember when we tore the electric window motors apart in first quarter, way back then, uh, this is really similar to that. It's just a 12 volt DC brush type motor. Um, it's, it's only going to be powered one direction. It's not bi-directional, just the way this motor is set up. But it, it's, it's really just a simple motor. There's not a whole lot going on. However, it is not serviceable. This thing is built and then spot welded together. So if you have an issue, you're definitely going to have to take it apart and or take the motor out to replace it with a new one, okay? So our blower motor is going to be controlled by this. And this is a blower motor resistor. Now, I think you guys can tell that this is actually a bad or burnt out blower motor resistor. And this resistor, we can see the big old black marks and how it's kind of burnt up right here. And you can see through that green coating. So that green coating should be the same color all the way across this on the new one. And what happens, because this is a resistor, we're using a resistor to cut the voltage down that is supplied to the blower motor. And with the lower amount of voltage, we're going to actually reduce the speed of the motor. Okay, so the resistor itself is actually going to create a byproduct of heat when it reduces that voltage because the resistor has to transfer that energy into something. So it's going to go from electricity basically to heat. So eventually we end up burning that resistor out and overheating the protection, the protective film that's on the resistor. So knowing that those resistors actually create quite a bit of heat, um, I want you guys to realize that they are typically actually located in the airstream. So the blower motor resistor is going to be located in the airstream and that is because the blower motor itself is going to be able to send cooling air past that resistor. It's going to allow those to live a lot longer. That's really important. Now I will tell you guys that in the, the we actually are starting to see the resistors go away. A lot of vehicles use a blower motor module. However, it's going to be mounted just like this. It'll look just like it. It's operated a little bit differently, and I feel that you guys can understand how a resistor works. And if you can understand that, then it's really just a small jump to go to a blower motor module. Um, so something to think about for now. <clears throat> so back to electrical class, I want to go over this. Um, this is a schematic of a typical blower motor resistor assembly. So we see our blower motor here is being fed when, when this relay is energized. When this relay is not energized, I'm sorry. The blower motor is actually being fed through these series of resistors. So if we run low, it has to go through resistor 1, 2, and 3. And if it is on high, it's only going through one resistor, or well, medium three, it's only going through one resistor, all right? So that's actually the key with this. The higher the speed, the less resistors that the, the voltage is going to go through. So the higher the speed of the blower motor, the less resistors it's going to go through, okay? So one thing I want you guys to notice is that on high, 
it comes over here and it does not go to that side of the blower motor at all. In fact, it goes through, it powers a relay, if we remember relay class, and it is cut off on this picture, but this is actually a battery power, and it, when we are on high, it sends on resisted voltage to the blower motor, okay? So we're getting maximum speed only on high, and it's actually fed not through this resistor, it's fed a whole different direction, okay? Now the last thing I want to talk about is cabin air filters. They get forgotten a lot, people don't check. They, aren't, they don't do a very good job of standardizing them to tell you where they're going to be located on a vehicle. Um, I've seen them anywhere from underneath the driver, the, uh, underneath the, the driver's seat, seat, I guess is how I want to call it, to up underneath the hood, um, to behind the glove box. They can be just about anywhere. I, I will say they seem like they've kind of gotten better at putting them behind the glove box or under the hood. I do recommend you guys check this. You can see this one gets pretty nasty, especially uh, around here in Dark County, Ohio. Um, during harvest time, people driving past farmers and we get the bees wings in it, which plug them up pretty bad. So it has that little red looking flakes that come from corn. Um, tend to see those quite a bit in these things, but this is not gonna pull very much airflow. If you have a customer complaining that the air is really weak on high, this is the first place I go. <clears throat> because I want to make sure that the air filter is clean, and if, if it isn't clean, then we need to replace it. I, I You can't really blow this out. You're going to have to replace it, right? Um, so don't forget the easy steps and make sure you've checked your air filter, your cabin filter, before you go any further. Okay, so that's a pretty good overview of what's happening in the air inlet section. Um, I think we're going to stop it here today, and you guys have a good weekend. Peace out.